What's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters as well as my pre-healthcare professionals alike? I hope that y'all are having a wonderful day. Today we are moving on with the English and language usage portion of the ATIT's review and we're going to start discussing sentence structure. So already make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and better yet hit that bell notification it lets you know when I post new content here on YouTube give this video a big thumbs up that way it lets other people know that this is a good review video for the ATIT's exam and helping you pass it like a boss sentence structure questions address clarity of expression subordinating conjunctions and how to combine sentences into single sentences you must be able to distinguish between single sentences, complex sentences, compound sentences, and sentence fragments. Starting with simple sentences. A simple sentence has one independent clause and express a complete thought. Ezra went to the store. This sentence is considered simple because it expresses a complete thought and contains only one independent clause and no dependent clauses. The following sentence is longer, but is also a simple sentence. Ezra went to the store and bought some chocolate milk for her sister. Understanding subordinating conjunctions. In this review on punctuation, we will review the types of coordinating conjunctions. These are connecting words such as and, but, so, and for, which may be used to join two independent clauses. Ezra went to the store and she bought some milk. When a coordinating conjunction is used to join two independent clauses, as we saw earlier, the conjunction must always be preceded by a comma. Ezra went to the store and she bought some milk. Without that comma, this is incorrect. Ezra went to the store, comma, and she bought some milk. This is correct. Independent clauses are considered independent because they can stand as complete sentences on their own. When we join two independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction, we are joining two clauses of equal weight. Neither are dependent on the other. Dependent clauses, on the other hand, do not form complete sentences on their own. They start with connecting words known as subordinating conjunctions. Here are some examples of dependent clauses. Because she left early. Although the package was heavy. While Mr. Galloway waited. When the game was over and after the crowd dispersed. Subordinating conjunctions are connecting words used to start dependent clauses. They include the words because, although, while, when, after, before, until, since, as, if, and once, among others. Subordinating conjunctions can be used to join two clauses in a way that places emphasis on one of the clauses over the other. For example, because its batteries had run low, the alarm clock suddenly stopped working. In the example above, the underlying clause is an independent clause. It is placed at the end of the sentence after the dependent clause because its batteries had run low. This example and ordering of clauses emphasizes the information at the end of the sentence. Here are a few more examples. Although the pizza is high in calories, it's my favorite food. While the teacher was away, the students talked loudly. Until it started to snow, the weather had been gorgeous. Complex sentences contain an independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. When Ezra went to the store, she bought some milk. In this example, the underlying clause is the independent clause. The dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence when Ezra went to the store. The following examples are complex sentences too. Although pizza is high in calories, it's my favorite food. While the teacher was away, the students talked loudly. Until it started to snow, the weather had been gorgeous. Each of these examples contain an independent clause underlined, plus a dependent clause with a subordinating conjunction. Compound sentences contain two or more independent clauses. They can be joined by a semicolon or by a comma in a coordinating conjunction. The professor gave a great lecture today. We thoroughly enjoyed it. The professor gave a great lecture today. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Both of these sentences are correct. A sentence fragment is a group of words that cannot stand on its own as a complete sentence. Sentence fragments often consist of solitary dependent clauses. After Martin thought it over, that's just a fragment. This example is a fragment because the clause after Martin thought it over doesn't provide enough information to stand on its own. 
We change this fragment into a simple or complex sentence. Martin thought it over. This is a simple sentence. After Martin thought it over, he decided to attend. This is a complex sentence. Sentence fragments can also be created if a sentence is missing its subject or its verb. Thinking it over in the middle of the afternoon is a fragment. Martin, who spent a lot of time thinking it over, is also a fragment. As with the earlier sentence fragment, these examples do not stand as complete sentences on their own. One way to complete these examples would be to add a subject to the first sentence and a main verb to the second. Martin was thinking it over in the middle of the afternoon. This is an example of a simple sentence. Martin, who spent a lot of time thinking it over, eventually decided to attend. This is another example of a simple sentence. Something you're going to hear in nursing school a lot when it comes to writing your papers are run-on sentences. A run-on sentence is a sentence in which two or more independent clauses are joined without an appropriate conjunction or punctuation. There are two types of run-on sentences, fused sentences and comma slices. A fused sentence has two independent clauses joined together with no conjunction or punctuation. The cat likes milk, she drinks it often as she can. This is incorrect. A comma splice incorrectly joins two independent clauses together with a comma. The cat likes milk, comma, she drinks it often as she can. This is also incorrect. To correct a run-on sentence, you have four options. Option one, separate the two independent clauses into two sentences. The cat likes milk, she drinks it often as she can. This is correct. Option two, correctly join the two independent clauses with a semicolon or even a comma in coordinating conjunction. The cat likes milk, she drinks it often as she can. This is correct. The cat likes milk, so she drinks it as often as she can. This is also correct. Option three, subordinate one of the two independent clauses so that you will have a complex sentence. Because the cat likes milk, she drinks it as often as she can. And lastly, option four, change the sentence into a simple sentence with only one independent clause. The cat likes to drink milk as often as she can. This is also correct. Dictation refers to the choice and use of words. In the reading section of my review, you learned about how writers choose words to achieve a certain tone in their writing. Writers also vary their dictation according to their purpose and audience. Formal dictation is used in formal situations such as business or scholarly writing. Informal dictation is used in informal situations such as writing to your friends. And colloquial dictation uses words common in the everyday speech of a time and region. Slang is the use of words that are newly coined, very informal, or can even be impolite. You will need to be able to distinguish between formal and informal modes of writing and identify slang. I hope that this video is helpful for you to pass your ATITs like a boss the first time. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you head over to my website at www.nursechung.com where there are additional resources related to the topics that we discuss here in these videos. Make sure you follow me on my social media. I am on Facebook, Instagram, as well as here on YouTube. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. But until next time, I hope that y'all have a wonderful day and I will speak with you all again soon in our next video. Bye.